The Rebel Capitalist Show. There's a couple points where you and I might disagree. So let's kind of discuss that here for a moment. The first would probably be California real estate. Uh, you're probably bullish. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, I'm I'm definitely bearish on California real estate. But let's hear your argument. Why are you bullish? Uh, why do you see a rosy future for? And obviously, it's it's location, location, location. But just from a a broad standpoint, California real estate, or is it maybe more Southern California? Yeah. Uh, it, look, California governance sucks. Uh, the taxation is ridiculous. The rent control rules are ridiculous. Uh, to me, unless you're living in a part of California that has a natural draw to where people say, I will pay the extra taxes and deal with the extra red tape to live there, then I don't think it makes sense to invest there. Like for me, that that would be, uh, yeah, Southern California coastline real estate is a great example. It, it, Santa Barbara, San Diego, these areas will always attract buyers who want to live there because you can only get that weather in 7% of the world and you know only 2% of that is in America. Uh, so that that's a natural draw that that you can't have anywhere else. Uh, outside of those areas, yeah, I mean, like maybe San Francisco, but recently, you know, I almost bought a place in San Fran and I'm glad I didn't now. <laughs> well, I lost the deal. <laughs> I really okay. wanted the thing. Would have been the biggest purchase of my life. It was uh, three and a half million dollars. I wrote an offer at the end of January, flew out there, it was one of the painted ladies, uh, those those seven houses there in the row uh, that you always okay. see in like so this full is like house an iconic or whatever. property. Very iconic, and it was the middle one, which had a view of the San Francisco Capitol, the best view. Uh, honestly, even just talking about it now, I still miss it. But you know, two weeks after I would have closed escrow, <laughs> you know, the pandemic locked down California, and I would have been screwed sitting on that thing for a year with uh, some pretty nasty payments. So I'm, I'm very grateful that did not work out in that sense. But uh, yeah, I mean, so obviously San Francisco real estate prices, I'm sure they're going to go through their little fix here uh, along with uh, like New York City and that. But generally high quality areas with, with uh, you know, either an increasing population or a decreasing poverty rate, I'm pretty bullish on uh, as long as they have a good draw. I do get nervous about certain real estate uh, where maybe the only draw is like, one college or one church and i'm like well what happens if they go away you know, yeah. that makes me nervous yeah tucson is a good example of that you know i had my brother living in tucson and i thought man with the the pandemic now i mean the whole tucson is built around u of a oh, so okay. if u of a goes and everyone's online where are all the businesses where where does all the real estate go i mean you really got a big problem there I did not know that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So what, any other reasons you're, you're bullish on the real estate right in your local area? The, probably the biggest reason beyond, uh, you know, buying in, in an area that, that should have a draw no matter what, uh, okay. is you, when you buy in an area that you're living in, you're more of an expert in that area. You know, <laughs> you, like if somebody goes, Hey, yo, Kevin, I'll uh, do this Craigslist deal, but I want you to come to, you know, one, two, three, whatever street. And I hear that street. And I'm like, heck no, I'm going there at 9 p.m. at night. You know, like <laughs> you only know that when you live there. Right. 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 Yeah. And, and, and I think your wife is your property manager as well, isn't she? That's right. OK, so that is another huge edge, because the hardest thing that I think uh, we all us real estate guys would agree, the hardest thing to figure out in real estate is property management. Yeah. And finding so, a good manager. Yeah. It's well, it's like finding a great employee, right? <laughs> you know, you find a great employee, you got to do whatever you can to keep them. Uh, and, and, uh, yeah, well, same thing. Yeah. So, so my, my pushback there, I think where we see things differently is you, I think maybe start with a bottoms up approach, which is natural, where I start with a, a tops down approach. It's kind of okay. looking at the macro. So I look at California and I see, okay, we've got a lot of population leaving and a lot of affluent population leaving California. You've got the homeless rate that's increasing. You've got the, the political landscape that's just in a mess. You've got yeah. the electrical grid. Who, who knows what's happening? But the bottom line is you, you see a lot of people exiting uh, California. And then I, I get a little apprehensive, especially with San Francisco, because... Yeah. 
I, I think that real estate market is really propped up by the stock market or the NASDAQ more specifically. Tech. And that's propped up by interest rates and the Fed and just a lot of central planning. And I thought, man, if we go back to a free market, if we ever do, uh, then that could, you know, and we had interest rates go up, let's say five or 6% Fed funds, then boy, that affects the, the tech companies and may that affect. So that's why I'm kind of more bearish on San Francisco. And you look at rates being in a 40 year down cycle, 5,000 year lows on interest rates. And you say at some point they've got to go back up. And that's most likely, in my opinion, going to disproportionately affect uh, California real estate because it's kind of one of these cyclical markets where it goes up, it really goes up. And when it goes down, it, it goes down quite dramatically as well. Um, as far as the equity, I always thought, okay, if I had equity in California, like San Francisco, I'd far rather sell, extract that equity and put it into another market, which might have less downside and where I could get a better RV ratio, meaning the rent that I'm getting per month relative to the value of what I have out of pocket is a little bit better. But then I think to argue your point, you're going to have to deal with some property management issues. And uh, then the last thing that I'll say with California real estate is I really get hesitant when the the noob, let's call them, <laughs> to use yeah, your, I like that, is getting into a deal where they're not cash flow positive, where they have negative carry, where rents have to increase or they have to have nominal appreciation in order for them to realize uh, some sort of gain. I just get really, really kind of hesitant with that deal. So that's my pushback. Uh, meet Kevin. What say you? Yes. So. The California population leaving, that, that's an issue, right? That's definitely an issue. One thing that's very interesting that's happening, though, is as as we are seeing people leave California because they're either priced out or they're leaving for tax reasons, the poverty rate is also starting to decline in certain areas. And mm, so okay. you know, part of me is wondering, is is this just maybe now you, you get less people, but potentially a more affluent people who are like, I'm willing to pay that weather tax. Time will tell. Look, okay. LA, San Fran, disaster with the homeless, right? I live in Ventura County, which is just below uh, Santa Barbara and above LA. We don't have that issue as much here. Uh, we get a lot of people from LA coming to our area to escape that. So we're almost partially beneficiaries of that. Like, I want the weather, but I got to get out of LA, oh, right? Okay. okay. Uh, so as we say, all real estate is local. Now, I personally, too, have, uh, and, and this is something that I've been torn between, is uh, I've, I've many times thought, why don't I sell my portfolio and buy in a different state? Or another thing that I've recently thought is why why not sell the portfolio and then buy buy a hundred unit building somewhere, mm -hmm. uh, cost segregate that, take some massive tax benefits, yeah. and and uh, boom, it's all centralized in one building. Yeah. Uh, if I was going to do one of those two things, I personally would probably lean towards doing a big building because unless I'm local, I don't want to go chase down you know a hundred single families yeah, in a, yeah. in a state that I don't know. Yeah. Uh, now, if I buy big multifamily, though, I'm probably going to have to overpay. It's going to be much harder for me to get a great deal because there are so many funds looking for those big deals. The only way to get a, a smoking deal on a big multifamily is if I knew a private seller that somehow had hundreds of units sitting around and they were selling them for way below market value. But, you know, that's either partially striking the lottery or being an expert in your local area, which is another reason I like the local area because people do call you just yesterday, you yeah. know, an agent like, Hey, come look at this property. It's off market. You get to see it first. Uh, that's, that's great. But that's almost like a, taking advantage of, of special relationships more than it is making sense of the actual real estate. Right. Mm -hmm. So those, that is a dilemma that I'm in uh, there, you know, I could 1031 the gains that I have in all these properties, but then I do pay selling fees. I hate paying selling fees. I hate mm -hmm. the fact that all of the properties I have are rented and, and I would have to, you know, like incrementally sell them, but then I can't 1031. Right. Yeah, so right. it's almost like, am I better just borrowing a bunch of money, buying a big deal somewhere and then individually selling these guys off? I, I don't know. I, I'm in, I'm at this point now where you know, having, what do we have, 23, 24 properties, something like that in, in Southern California here, all here, uh, it's probably worth 20, 22, depending once once it's fixed up, a uh, million dollars in value. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm at this place where I can't get 30-year fixed conventional, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac financing any, uh, anymore. And part of me is just like, why, well, I, I may as well just throw my money into Tesla. <laughs> you know, part of me feels that way. Yeah. But I still love real estate so much because it's such a great way to build your wealth when you're starting. And I think that's where 
I kind of draw that line and I, and I say, look, if your net worth is certainly under a million dollars, you should start by buying real estate and putting three and a half percent down, getting into a deal. Uh, and in some cases, look, if you put anything less than tw- actually probably most cases now, if you put less than 25 percent down, you're not going to be cash flow positive. You rent it out. Uh, and, and I've often seen that as the price for basically borrowing that extra 20 percent. It's still a problem because if you have to leave, you're upside down. You rent that thing out. Yeah. Uh, and, and certainly some level of negative cash flow is very dangerous. But, you know, oftentimes when you and it's just my opinion, but somebody gets in with three and a half percent down, let's say they're negative 300 bucks a month. That sounds like a big deal. But on a year, that's thirty six hundred bucks. So you're paying thirty six hundred bucks. How good of a deal are you getting? Are you able to get a deal that's 50 to 100 grand under market value after you spend your fix up money? So on top of that fix up money, right? Well, now you've just paid for 15 years of that negative, right? Now, obviously, there are more complications there. But the point is, getting people into real estate lets them leverage up their wealth so much more quickly because now you put 3.5% down on a, on a place you got under market value. You're putting 20 grand in. Your net worth goes from 20 grand to 100 grand because you got a wedge deal. You know, your net worth balloons much faster. Now, appreciation on top of that, principal pay down. You know, it's, it's I think, a personal situation. Everybody's got a way out. I think that's a great way to say it. And I also want to point out in your defense, and correct me if I'm wrong, that during the GFC, there were pockets of California, the real estate market, that really didn't go down that much, if if, if at all, from 2006 to 2012. So I, I think it really emphasizes the, the point that where you have to be a local expert and every circumstance is different based on not only your skill set, but I think also the cash flow you have coming in outside of real estate, right? Yes.